James Arness truly hated him, now his children confirm the rumours. Are you a Gunsmoke fan? Think you know everything about this classic American Western TV series? Think again. Beneath the surface of on-screen friendships and the legendary status Gunsmoke has achieved lies a hidden world of backstage turmoil. This video is set to reveal the untold struggles within the cast, including the tensions between James Arness and one of his co-stars and the deep-seated animosity he harboured. The truth behind the scene is as far from the harmonious image portrayed on screen, filled with conflicts that tested the limits of the ensemble. Prepare to be shocked by the revelations of the behind the scenes drama that brought an unexpected depth to this iconic series. For the true fans of Gunsmoke, this journey into the shadows of their favourite show is one you cannot afford to miss. So, if you enjoy our video, press 1. But now, without further ado, giddy up. For two decades, from its inception in 1955 until its conclusion in 1975, Gunsmoke reigned supreme in the realm of television, captivating audiences weekly with the exploits of Marshall Matt Dillon. Its consistent appeal and remarkable success not only anchored it as a pivotal figure in the Western drama genre, but also ensured it became a weekly viewing ritual for fans. Throughout its run, even as interest in Westerns began to wane, Gunsmoke's loyal viewership remained steadfast, solidifying its legacy as the quintessential Western series of its era. This enduring popularity and critical acclaim have firmly established Gunsmoke as one of the most significant and greatest TV shows in the annals of television history, epitomizing the golden era of the 1950s to the 1970s. Gunsmoke's journey from radio to television exemplifies its extraordinary adaptability and foresight, playing a crucial role in the show's extended success. Initially launching as a radio series, it smoothly transitioned to television, debuting as a half-hour black-and-white show. This move not only marked the beginning of its visual storytelling, but also demonstrated the producer's readiness to innovate and adapt to new mediums. As technology and television advanced, so did Gunsmoke, undergoing significant transformations that included expanding to an hour-long format and transitioning to include both colour and grayscale broadcasts. This willingness to embrace change and pioneer new formats highlighted Gunsmoke's dedication to innovation, ensuring its longevity in an era when adapting to such advancements was not the norm for many series. The transition of Gunsmoke from radio to television involved fascinating decisions regarding casting and sponsorships, creating memorable what-if moments in its history. John Wayne, an iconic figure, was initially considered for the role of Matt Dillon but due to his film commitments, the opportunity to see him in the television version never materialised. The role of Dylan during the radio broadcast was originally voiced by William Conrad, but with the move to television, the casting shifted towards James Arness, whose physical presence was deemed more suitable for the visual demands of the character. This pivotal casting choice shaped the series' identity, with Arness becoming synonymous with Matt Dillon. Additionally, Gary Busey's contribution to Gunsmoke, particularly his portrayal of Harv D, left a significant mark on the show. His performance in his final Gunsmoke episode highlighted the producer's efforts to maintain the show's alignment with family-friendly content, carefully navigating the depiction of the characters' professions. In a pivotal moment during its 16th season, Gunsmoke's writers decided to reveal Doc's full name as Galen Adams, enriching the audience's connection with this cherished character, Milburn Stone, who brought Doc to life on screen, was given the privilege of choosing the character's first name, a testament to his deep understanding of Doc's essence. This personal touch underscored the thoughtful development behind the series. The transition of Gunsmoke from radio to television spearheaded by the producers marked a significant turning point for the show, elevating it to unprecedented success. Remarkably, even as the television series captivated audiences, the original radio drama continued to broadcast until 1961, demonstrating the enduring charm and appeal of Gunsmoke's narratives and characters well into the television era. This duality of success highlights the timeless nature of Gunsmoke's storytelling, appealing to fans across different mediums. Philbenstone, in a candid interview, illuminated the intense confrontation he had with James Arness on the Gunsmoke set, providing insight into their heated interaction. He detailed a critical moment where he addressed Arness's behaviour, which he viewed as unprofessional, expressing his unwillingness to endure further disturbances. Following Stone's admonishment, Arness responded not with defiance, but with a sincere apology, 
admitting, you're absolutely right. This moment of unexpected humility and acknowledgement from Anne is deeply influenced Stone, marking a turning point in their relationship. The dynamics between them shifted significantly thereafter, transforming initial animosity into deep-seated affection. Stone's subsequent view of Arnus as a great big wonderful guy underscored the profound change in his perception, highlighting the evolution of their bond from conflict to mutual respect and fondness. Could James Arnes ride a horse? Before his acting career took off, Arnes harbored aspirations of becoming a naval fighter pilot, only to be redirected to serve as a rifleman in the US Army during World War II due to his imposing height. Standing at six foot seven, his stature was deemed advantageous for assessing the depth of beach waters during the invasion, a role that led him to the Battle of Anzio. There, Arnes sustained severe injuries to his right leg, necessitating multiple surgeries and a prolonged recovery period which significantly altered his life's path. Encouraged by his brother to explore opportunities in radio, Arnes eventually made a successful transition to television, embodying the iconic Dodge City Marshal in Gunsmoke. Despite his impressive presence, a careful observer might notice Arness's slight limp, a remnant of his wartime injuries. This limp was more than a physical marker. It symbolized the pain and difficulty Arness experienced while mounting and riding horses on the show, a testament to his commitment and versatility as an actor. James Arness faced a formidable challenge with a severe case of arthritis which significantly affected the production schedule of Gunsmoke. The condition demanded that Arnes take extensive breaks for rest before resuming filming, a necessity that allowed him to manage the physical demands of his role and maintain the quality of his performance despite his health issues. Alongside Arnes, Glenn Strange, another treasured actor, left a lasting impact on Hollywood and Gunsmoke with a career that reached its zenith in the 1940s. Strange's versatility shone through in his memorable portrayal of Frankenstein and his significant contributions to Gunsmoke, highlighting his broad acting skills. His legacy in Hollywood goes beyond his role in Gunsmoke, influencing both the horror and western genres and cementing his place as a distinguished figure in the entertainment industry. Did James Arness's wife appear on Gunsmoke? In the 1956 episode titled The Killer, Chapman can be seen portraying a wandering, mysterious woman, though her appearance goes uncredited. This cameo marks a unique intersection of Arness's personal and professional lives during the early years of Gunsmoke's historic run on television. Arness's journey to finding love was a winding one, initially marrying Virginia Chapman and then being involved with actress Thordis Brandt before ultimately meeting Janet Surtees, who would become his soulmate. Their meeting was somewhat serendipitous, set up through a series of connections, starting with Janet working in a dress shop. The shop's owner, married to Arnes's makeup artist, arranged a dinner that led Janet and James to meet. Despite initial reservations about dating an actor, Janet was persuaded by her son's enthusiasm for Gunsmoke. Their relationship blossomed, highlighted by a memorable picnic at Mammoth Lakes, where James's considerate action of cleaning up the area left a lasting impression on Janet, solidifying her affection for him. Interestingly, Amanda Blake, who became synonymous with the role of Miss Kitty Russell in Gunsmoke, was not the first choice for the character. The producers initially hesitated to cast her, but Blake's undeniable talent and commanding presence ultimately won them over, leading her to secure the role. Her embodiment of Miss Kitty Russell not only defined the character, but also left a lasting impact on the show and television history. Blake's performance brought a unique blend of depth and charisma to Gunsmoke, contributing significantly to its success and making it hard to envision anyone else in the role of the iconic saloon owner. The end of Gunsmoke not only closed a significant chapter in television history, but also unfolded unexpectedly for the cast, who learned about the show's cancellation through media reports. This revelation was particularly shocking, given the profound influence the series had on the TV landscape. The journey to find the ideal Matt Dillon saw numerous actors, including the talented Raymond Burr and Denver Pyle audition for the role. Despite their commendable performances, neither was ultimately seen as the right choice by the producers, underscoring the meticulous search for the perfect actor to embody the iconic character. The 1970s brought about significant changes in societal attitudes towards violence, 
impacting the way Gunsmoke was presented to its audience. Traditionally, episodes began with Marshal Matt Dillon in a gunfight, a hallmark of the show's opening. Yet as public sentiment shifted against the depiction of violence, CBS re-evaluated this aspect of the series, faced with the choice of cancelling Gunsmoke or making alterations. The network decided to place Gilligan's Island on hiatus instead, thereby preserving the beloved Western drama and adapting to the changing times. This decision reflected a broader societal transformation and the network's commitment to keeping Gunsmoke a part of the television landscape. Gunsmoke's place in television history is firmly established, marked by a record of longevity that was unparalleled until a significant moment in 2018. On April 29th of that year, The Simpsons aired its 636th episode during its 28th season, surpassing Gunsmoke's long-standing record. For the most primetime episodes, Gunsmoke, which had concluded after 20 seasons, previously held this distinction. This milestone by The Simpsons not only marked a new record, but also underscored the evolving nature of television production and season structuring over the years. Comparing these two iconic series offers insights into the changing dynamics of TV show longevity and the strategies behind episode production across different eras in television history. The legacy of Gunsmoke transcends its narrative, setting a standard for the television industry's capacity to engage viewers with enduring and compelling content. As the series approached the conclusion of its impressive run in 1975, it took an unforeseen path, ending abruptly and leaving its audience without the closure or grand farewell they might have expected. This period also marked a pivotal chapter in the relationship between Milburn Stone and James Arnes, who portrayed key characters on the show. Initially marked by animosity, their rapport experienced a profound shift. In a revealing interview with TV Guide, Stone opened up about the evolution of their relationship. Noting that his initial feelings of strong dislike towards Arnes gave way to respect and collaboration after a critical confrontation. This moment of honesty and reconciliation between Stone and Arnes laid the groundwork for a more united and effective partnership, underscoring the complex dynamics that contributed to the show's success and enduring influence. The distinct approaches of Milburn Stone and James Arnes to their work on Gunsmoke could have led to conflict, but instead they enriched the show's dynamic. Stone's strict professionalism and Arnes's more relaxed demeanour might appear incompatible at first glance. However, this juxtaposition brought about a unique equilibrium to the set. Arnes's sense of humour acted as the perfect foil to Stone's seriousness, fostering an atmosphere of balance and mutual respect that played a crucial role in the series' sustained popularity. The commitment of both Arness and Stone to Gunsmoke is particularly noteworthy, with Stone's determination in the face of health issues inspiring both his colleagues and fans. His ability to overcome personal health struggles and continue performing underscored the resilience and unwavering spirit that defined the Gunsmoke cast, serving as a powerful example of dedication to one's craft and to the portrayal of cherished characters. In the cultural zeitgeist of the 1960s and 1970s, the catchy phrase, let's make like a tree and leave, emerged as a popular slang among teenagers, symbolizing a quick exit. Although its prevalence has waned over the years, the phrase still holds a spot in collective cultural memory. Within the storied universe of Gunsmoke, James Arnes's portrayal of Marshal Matt Dillon was marked by a consistently stoic presence over the show's remarkable 20-year span and 635 episodes. Dylan's romantic life was only lightly touched upon, a creative choice that added an intriguing layer of mystery to his character. By focusing more on the challenges and victories in the rugged setting of the Old West, rather than delving deeply into romantic storylines, Gunsmoke crafted a narrative that resonated with audiences and maintained a concentrated emphasis on the thematic essence of the series. Ken Curtis's tenure on Gunsmoke as Festus Hagen following Dennis Weaver's departure as Chester showcased his profound commitment to the art of acting and his ability to imbue the series with enriched narratives through his compelling performances. Curtis's portrayal of Festus 
a character that met a poignant end highlighted his versatility and dedication, significantly contributing to the depth and complexity of the Gunsmoke saga. In parallel, James Arnes's legacy extends beyond his iconic role as Matt Dillon. His valorous service during World War II, where he was awarded numerous honors, including the Combat Infantryman Badge, Purple Heart, and World War II Victory Medal, reflects his remarkable bravery and dedication. Arnes's distinguished military service and his contributions to Gunsmoke together paint a picture of a man committed to excellence, both in his professional and personal life, underlining the extraordinary character of those who brought Gunsmoke to life. That wraps up our exploration for today, but the conversation doesn't end here. We're eager to hear from you. Do you have a favorite Gunsmoke episode that stands out in your memory? Or perhaps another role played by James Arnes that you think is a must watch? Dive into the comments section and share your insights with us. If you've enjoyed our journey through the annals of country content, drop a nine in the comments to help spread the word. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on all our nostalgic adventures. A big thank you from the team at Do You Remember for tuning in today.